Okay guys, how's it going and welcome to another video, the best type of video any guy, any content creator could want and that is having their car serviced. So obviously before we get this thing mapped we definitely need it to be um, top notch, ready to go because I definitely do not want to freaking put it on a dyno and anything bad happen and still have to pay for the tuner's time. So I'm going to go ahead, today we're going to do spark plugs, we're going to change the oil and filter and then I'm going to change the cam follower, which will be in a different video because I do want to do a tutorial on how to do that. Although there probably is loads of them already online. But um, yeah, and then whatever else I got, because I got quite a few bits in the post today. So if there's anything else that I could do a quick video on, I'll uh, chuck it in this one as well. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. So first thing we want to do is open the bonnet. Get a good look at what we're about to do. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to drain the oil and while it's dripping and draining um, we're going to go ahead and do the spark plugs so that means we've basically letting all the oil um, drip out and it's completely empty then and then while that's dripping out we can go ahead do the plugs and then we both basically hitting two birds at one. Um, and uh, this is the oil and stuff I'm going to be using. So Castrol Edge 540 Advanced Fully Synthetic. Um, I've always used Castrol 540 and I, I only go with Castrol really is because my, on my uh, younger days when I had like two straight bikes and stuff it was always Castrol that always made it run the best so Castrol in my eyes has just always been really good quality uh, we've got a genuine oil filter and we've got the magnetic um, sump bung which I'll put a link in the, the description awesome little piece of kit Obviously it's magnetic, um, so if any chunks or anything comes, it's a bloody hair on that or something, um, comes apart, it will just go ahead, stick to the, stick to the sump, so that it doesn't damage any of the other components. Um, and then I've gone ahead and got the little air freshener as well, uh, which I don't have on one of these. Um, and then this is the spark plugs, so don't mind these two. This is the plugs I'm going for. There's the code ngk um yeah pretty standard plugs so uh yeah i'm gonna go ahead and get the car the front of the car in the air take the belly pan off and crack the oil filter hopefully that comes off okay because i know sometimes they're an absolute nightmare to come off and i'm really not looking forward to it side note this has actually come out so much better now that it's like fully like bedded in like it actually looks better in person than it does on camera. Um, dead happy that that was definitely worth it. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know if you guys have seen the last video. I had a little problem with my um, reverse sensor. So this is the one from my old S3. As you can see, it's grey. I had to take one of them out. Absolute nightmare, guys. If one of your parking sensors goes, definitely take a day off off work and just be prepared to have some patience because I had to like literally take most of the bumper off just to get this parking sensor so I could swap it with the with my spare one. Absolute nightmare, but it's done now and hopefully don't ever have to have another fucking parking sensor. Okay, so you're going to want to go ahead and get your boot mat from your S3 that you uh, no longer need and take off this bad boy panel here, it's just loads of torque screws um, and then it just slides backwards and comes straight off and as you see jack stands both at the same setting just so it's pretty level and hopefully all the oil drains okay. I'm gonna go ahead and grab your T20 Torx bit for the belly pan, and that's all it is. So once you've got all your, your Torx's out, 
Um, unfortunately, I've got six. There's meant to be eight, but it does the job still. So literally, as easy as that, you just pull it down from the grooves up there. And then we can put this over there. So your oil filter is right here. You're going to take off this cap, which I'm going to take some pliers on that. And then your sump button is right here, which I believe is a 17. Um, and then this is like a 36, something like that. Not really, really big boy. Um, hoping I've got that socket. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so got my uh, drain bucket. And the size is a 19, not a 17. So you want the engine to be sort of warm, um, not scalding hot, just so that the oil can thin. Again, yeah, so, okay. so once you've got that off, get your bucket and just do the rest by, should be able to do the rest by hand. I um, don't know how warm we are talking, that's pretty damn warm. Luckily I don't need this bolt, so as soon as it comes up, we can just say see you later. Come on fella. Come on. Oh, we are pros, look at that. Not a single bit on my glove. Now we're gonna go ahead and let that drain. And uh, we can start doing the spark plugs. So while the engine um, oil is draining, you want to head and take off the cap just to release any air at the top, just so it can fully flow down. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and crank that back up. So super easy with these plugs. Um, unfortunately, most of these do break very often. So what we'll do is just push down and you'll be able to put it away. Same thing for all of them, push down, put it away, push down, put it away. Push down, put it away. Then you've got the whole, the whole loom. You just want to tuck it back like that. And these can be quite tricky as well. So if you want to try by hand first, like that. Just wobble back and forth, get them out. I've had these out quite recently to do a compression test. So they're not terrible, but if they're seized normally, I'd get some flatheads and try and pry it out. There we go. So there's all the four coils. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description for these red coils. Really, like, they look neat. I don't really know how to do anything, but they're just probably the equivalent of having a nice fresh set of coils so you don't have any spark issues or any concerns. So, go ahead. Get all the plugs out. I believe they are 16 mil for this. And you want to get a socket that has like a little sponge or something inside so it pulls the um, spark plugs out. And then, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get all these out and I'll get back to you guys. Okay, so we've got our new plugs all out of the boxes now, so you just want to make sure that you've got the right codes, same code as what we have, which they are, I've already checked it. So that's the code you guys want. And uh, they're already they're the same size and everything, so they're ready to go straight back in. And uh, yeah, here we go again.
So you just want to crush the crush washer that the spark plugs come with. So if you sort of feel it, just sort of. I'm not going to go overly tight. Just good snug already. That's it, time to put the cores back in. So with your loom, you just want to pull it towards you until you hit somewhat of a click. And make sure again, push all your coils down so everything is definitely secure and have no worries. Cool, so there you go, spark plugs done. Now I'm gonna go ahead back down there and try and get that oil filter off. Okay, so I've just cracked it loose. Luckily, this is the socket I have. Looks like I must have bought it before for this. And uh, I've just cracked it loose now. So I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to put the magnetic drain bung in and then move the bucket over here so then they can collect any access that comes out of this filter. And then uh, I'll go ahead and come back to you guys once I've got the uh, oil filter housing off. Okay guys, so I've got the housing off. Um, it was a bit of a messy job literally undoing. This was just pouring out while I was undoing it. But anyway, we've got the new one here. The um, old one, all you want to do is literally just pull it out from the housing and it'll come straight out so there's the new one it will come with a new new seal here which goes right in there I don't know if you can see it it's there that's it there so yeah replace that super easy and then it's literally just a quick rob I might actually be able to put this on now there we go and then when you're down you just got to click it in so that's it clipped in and now I'm going to go ahead take that seal out put the new one in and then it's ready to go back on the car okay so we've got the new seal in got the new filter in and now we're ready to put it back on I'm not going to bother cleaning any of that up just yet. I'm going to go ahead and put this housing on and then um, just clean it up. Hopefully, I'll have some brake cleaner. If you guys have any brake cleaner, literally, best thing to do because brake cleaner will get all rid of all that. Um, so, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just fucking go up there. Give it a little twist around. Make sure you fill the threads and it's all nice and smooth. You don't want any cross threads, any, any bumps any issues at all with there we go look at that that's going straight in now so once you got that in i'll go ahead and google the torque for this actually because i do not want it to be tight or anything i mean loose i mean right i'll get back to you guys okay guys so we've gone ahead got the new sump bung in put the new filter in that's all tight that actually um has the new meters on the cover it says 25 newton meters 0.5 25.5 and i've just done that one up pretty damn snug and again just wiping down everything so that you guys know and myself if there's any leaks in the future i'm gonna know that it definitely is a leak and isn't just any access and if you guys are wondering how come everything's so like say sort of clean is because I, um, when I first called it, I degreased all the bottom of the engine bay and um, used a brush to get off any dirt and grime and then completely undersprayed the engine just to, um, with heat proof paint obviously, just to um, clean up as well as I'll know straight away if anything is seeping from anywhere. And uh, so far, 
We are good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and get this belly pan back on and then we're going to put the oil back in. It sort of dawned on me that it would be a better idea to leave the belly pan off and put the oil in now and start it um, while the belly pan's off so we can see properly if there is any leaks that obviously with the belly pan off we'll be able to see the oil filter and see if anything's weeping. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting the oil in now. Um, I'm not one hundred sure how much this takes but I'm guessing it can't be any more than five liters and I've got five liters. So you want to clean up your uh, funnel and get started. Okay guys, so I've gone ahead, put all the um, oil is topped up to the maximum level. We still have a little bit left inside there. So for some reason, 4.7 liters comes to mind. I'm not too sure whether that is actually the correct amount, but for some reason it's in my head. So go ahead and crank her on just to get the oil in the oil filter around the block again. And I'll check the level one more time. So anyway, guys, so I've gone ahead, let it run for a little while. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the belly pan back on now and then drop the car onto the floor, check the level one more time, and then we'll call it a day and say that we are now done. Before I end this video, I'm gonna go ahead and whack this little air freshener in. Um, and I'll go ahead and put the link in the description for you guys to buy it as well. Um, it just goes on the, um, the air vent and then, uh, yeah, it's just like a little smelly. So I'm gonna go ahead and unpack this and then I'll get back to you. And there we go. Cool little air freshener with a little Audi logo. Little gecko for the Quattro um, scene. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I've also got the cam follower to do next, which will be in the next video. But uh, yeah, if you guys service in your car, I hope this helped a little bit. Um, super easy and this could cost you like a hundred pounds from a garage if you think about it that way where literally if you go just buy some similar easy tools like what the sockets and stuff I've used and some jack stands and a little jack you know you could do it whenever you want so uh yeah guys I'll go ahead and catch you guys in the next one